because you're so mad that you stole my shoes, I want to do something even worse. Yes. So it's like, not only am I going to steal your shoes, I um, might kill your cat or something. Yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I am Wanda Maximoff. Wanda Maximoff. Wanda Waximoff. Wax him <laughs> on. Mr. Miyagi. What's up, everybody? Today is a very special day because it is your birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday to me, Happy Wanda birthday. Maximoff. And Wanda Maximoff. The Scarlet Witch. Oh. Avengers. Oh, WandaVision. Oh, nice. I never watched. Did you watch it? No. It's also not my birthday, so maybe it's just opposite day. Maybe. Maybe so. We're counting down the days of being in Florida, guys. This has been a very fun two weeks, but we're coming to the end of it. But that's okay. Because with every closed door is a bunch of other doors slamming in your face. Right. Um, yeah. We have to get out before Hurricane Sam comes by. Hurricane Sam. Sam I am. Yeah. Um It's is Thursday. When... <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, we're on Florida time. I you know what it is? I ate a big bowl of soup right before I started this podcast. Soup at the beach. And something about soup just puts me in a in a little docile mood. Did you ever see that SpongeBob clip? It's like a SpongeBob episode, it's my favorite part. Um and he's just like I don't really feel like it. Ah, uh, no, I don't really feel like it. You know that one? Yeah, yeah. That's how I feel right now. You don't feel like it. Okay. Well, really it's the last like day of September. Oh, is it? Yeah. Wow. The year is just... Spencer, Remember it's when September I... 30th. It still feels like 2019. It still feels like the 29th. There'll be no September 31st this year. No. <laughs> September 31st. Where have you been? Um. Oh, okay. So we're going into October. Spooky season. Do you like spooky season? That's spelled S Z N. Um, spooky seasoning. Do you like spooky season? Yeah, of course. You like Halloween? I'm spooky. You like scary movies? Yeah, I'm the Scarlet. You, you don't I'm like the, scary movies. I'm the Scarlet Witch. You like scary movies? Nothing scares me. I don't like scary movies. Um, I kind of, I'm, I might just be pessimistic. The same way I am about snakes pessimistic about snakes like where i say nobody can truly own a snake oh and, <laughs> no you can't own a snake. <laughs> no one can truly in, to enjoy a snake but they like the idea of having snakes okay now i like a scary movie now and again but do you know you ever meet people and they're like oh it's my favorite scary movie i yeah. love scary movies and it's like do you or do you love to love scary movies i just don't like i just don't like uh, anything that's trying to control my emotions. Like people also like sad movies. Ah, uh, see, I'm a, I'm I want to cry. I want to be scared. Like I just want to be myself. I'm a sucker for the sad movies, but um, scary movies is like yeah, it's like, uh, let me just be afraid. Why? Yeah. Like I have enough fear in my life on a daily basis of like. Oh going, my! I'm so going, sorry. Of like going into for a handshake and then they're going in for a fist pound and then I end up grabbing their hand. Yeah. Like that's the kind of stuff that scares me. I don't right. need ghosts on top of that. I don't need demons and goblins yeah. and Annabelle dolls. Yeah. I'm scared I know. of well, social situations. Because like movies are kind of not so popular as they used to be. No. Nah. That would actually be a really good scary movie for me of just all awkward <laughs> social situations. Like when you say like. Yeah, that's funny. Um, hey, what's up? And it's like, oh, I'm good. It's like, yeah, oh, right. Like that. Yeah, all that. Or like someone waves and you wave back and then you turn around and we're waving the person behind you. Right. That would be like. I would I, I would need someone, and I'd be like, I'll cuddle. I'll look, ah, ah, the popcorn, tell me it's not real. Tell me it's the not popcorn real. popcorn will fly out of your hands. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good old social situations. But yeah, time's running down in Florida, so I'm going to get as much beach time as I can, because it's cold back in Pennsylvania. All my friends are waking up to 50-degree days. And you know what the worst part is? What? I'll tell you the worst part, because this is the Pessimistic Podcast, brought to you by Mr. Pessimist himself. Is... In two months, we're going to look at 50 degree days like they're 80 degree days. It is um, Canada Orange Shirt Day. Why are neither of us wearing an orange shirt? You have to just talk about that more. I'm guessing an orange shirt is like a, it's more than just a color. Yes, yes. It's um, September 30th. 
And so, um, good soup. It's called Canada Orange Shirt Day. You wear orange shirts today in Canada. You can wear them um, all over the world, but uh, and you see that on social media. And it's um, it's in recognition of the Indian residential school system. It's it's actually called the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, and it is about the atrocities that happened to Indigenous people of the Canadian province during colon- colonization. Does America have one of those holidays? Thanksgiving. <laughs> they probably should. They probably should. Um, this is new. This is 2013. Okay. So we still have so time So maybe we can spread it into, one. into, you know, because I feel like we're, it's not like Independence Day where it's like, hey, Canada, you can't celebrate our 4th of July. Right. This is like the indigenous Native Americans. Yeah. They didn't see the Canadian-American border. Right. They True. Saw, yeah, it was just a... Well, my uncle lives over there. Who would travel. And my yeah. cousin lives over there. Right. So, orange shirts. I wish I was wearing orange. I bet if I... I bet I can, like, change the color yeah. of the this filter. Yeah, make you have an orange make, shirt. Look, yeah, it's pretty close, actually. Orange shirt. Look at me. I have on my St. Augustine shirt. That's nice. I'm going to have to go buy some uh, souvenirs today. Souvenirs? Souvenirs, as the French say. <laughs> but, yeah. uh... The souvenirs that are made in China. Blink, blink. What's the problem with that? You know, I believe in just a we're all brothers and sisters in this world. No, I don't mean I don't have any problems with things. It that sounds are, like you're like, unless it's made in America. No, I don't want it. No, I do love America. But I see what you're saying. That's not my point. I'm buying a hoodie that says St. Augustine. Right. That has nothing to do with St. Augustine. Right. I'd be better off picking up a, a cup of sand and bringing it. Right. That's truly from St. Augustine. To try to get a souvenir from somewhere and bring it back. Um, They just... You got, like whatever could, factory I, I, made this also made the ones for Myrtle Beach and yeah, for I could go home California on my way home stop at like the Wildwood Boardwalk have them print out St. Augustine well, and you, it would be the exact same thing well yeah yeah but that would be so much work you know yeah I see what you're saying so what should I get what, what should, if, if I was getting a souvenir what would, a, what would a good souvenir for you be do you like are you a magnet person do you like the magnets magnets are nice Um, I don't I want any souvenir so if you were trying to buy a heartfelt souvenir. I like postcards. Because post the postcard, cards? even though the postcard could have been printed in Poland, the fact that you mailed it and it was postmarked from St. Augustine is like, or from Myrtle Beach or from Miami Beach or from um, Fort Worth, Texas, you see that- Or from know, Wichita, Kansas. From, well, <laughs> we, have to get, we have to go to Wichita, Kansas. Yes. Which, the Scarlet Wichita, Kansas. Oh. Um, Okay, postcards. That's a good one. Postcards are something. Um, people, if it, depending how quickly you, you're going home, you can bring a food, uh, mm. like a food that is um specific to yes. the place. Yes. Um, a p- hot sauce. Hot there is sauce. hot sauce here that is only made here with the daddle pepper. Okay, so so any kind of local thing. Something local. 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 Yeah. I respect that. I'm guessing. I don't know. I don't know. What are we? The uh, souvenir experts? We're not the souvenir sommeliers? We're not the souvenir experts. No, we're not the experts at anything. Um, but yeah, so today is what? September 29th on a Thursday? September 30th. I just told you last day. Yeah, nice. Um, it's a good day to be alive. The birds are chirping. The cicadas are cicada. <laughs> um, the frogs are croaking. The Who's flamingos the are. The flamingos we, never make told, noise. we never told them about the frog in our house. Oh, that's right. You want to tell them about it? I saw something moving out of the corner of my eye, and it was. I thought it was a bug because it was that small. What kind of size bug would that be? I feel a grasshopper's too big. Yeah, like think of like a large beetle. No, a normal size beetle. It was small. Yeah, it was very small. I don't like know. Like a bottle cap. Yeah. Uh, but very pale, and it had the long, stretchy legs. Yeah. And it was it was long, stretchy legging itself. It was bouncing itself across the tile floor. Yeah, and you freaked out. Croak and crow. It's supposed to be, that's our spirit animal, or so we thought. And <laughs> you, I thought someone was murdered inside. I know. I don't like I don't like creeps and crawls. Yeah, it was a little creepy and crawly, but we got it out. Yeah. Alive and well. Humanely. 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 We humanely euthanized it. We did not euthanize <laughs> it. And we, we literally, no. did, we didn't even just let it out the door. We went to the frog colonies to see which one was missing. Yes. We didn't want to give it to a new family. Yes. So we were like. We talked to the elders of the, yeah. the frog communities and they point us, pointed us in the right direction. Yeah. And we returned it back to its family. Yes. 
But that's not the point. Today's not Frog Friday. Today is Walk Through Thursday. Roll the intro, please. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cause Walk Through Wednesday just begun. What's up, everybody? It is Walk Through Thursday. Do I need to say more? Yes, I do. What we do on Walk Through Thursday is we open up the Bible. The Bible's open. <laughs> and once the Bible's open, what we do is we pick a verse or a parable or a story or a song or a psalm. <laughs> and we break it down, people. We break it down. And what that means is we slow it down. Yeah. We slow. Just slow it down. Take take a take a down quarter of an hour, and we break. We look at it sentence by sentence, line by line, word by word, letter by letter, and we try to find the deeper meaning of it. Today, folks, I can't say it enough. It's not about doing a mantra of how fast we can say a Bible verse, how many Bible verses we know by heart. It's not a quantity thing. It's a quality thing, and we try to find the deeper meaning of said verse. What does it mean to you? What does it mean to me? Because it can mean something different, and that's what we're here to find out. So without further ado. Today we're going to do Leviticus 19.18. Leviticus! For, uh, chapter 19, verse 18. When you hear 19.18, what do you think of? I think of the War of 1918. The uh, World War I ended on November 11th, 1918, the yes. 11th oh, wait, hour. I'm thinking of the War of 1812. <laughs> yeah the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month but the 11s don't matter except to you um may 11th every year so yeah the war ended on 1918 um but another way you might be hearing 1918 r most recently was the pandemic the spanish flu yeah the the, the pandemic that happened almost 100 years before our pandemic yeah so it was um re thought about i my grandmother was alive for um the pandemic and f in philadelphia and she remembered all the people who perished um and we are still dealing with ours in 2021 yes we are that's a fact but that they get a vaccine or they just let it go by and by i doubt they got a vaccine yeah it lasted a long time like five years for them did it it like resurged it like went away and resurged and went away all right, so you can read it. Oh, nice. Ahem. Leviticus 19.18, we're doing the new international version because that's the version we like. And if you don't like it, eat my socks. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people. Anyone among your people. I, I read anyone as if it was among. I have like word switching. I, but I also wrote it in very chicken scratch as they used nah. to say in school. All right, let me start over. Okay. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Don't throw drop, it. <laughs> drop the mic. Well, I feel like, like when he's like, when it says I am the Lord, it's just sort of like drop the mic. True. Yeah. Always. Love your neighbor as yourself. Boom. Always. Um. So Leviticus 19, 18. I like it. Um, obviously, I like it. This is our language. They're speaking our language. Mm -hmm. um, Which you wouldn't think Leviticus would speak our language. Why? It's in the Bible, isn't it? Isn't Leviticus like don't eat pork and stuff like that? Am I yeah, wrong on that? It's like the one where people bring up like don't lay with a man. Okay. Um, but we'll walk through that when the time comes. Yes. Let me give you a Dalai Lama quote. Um, not, not on this paragraph, but just what he <clears throat> says about revenge. Okay. And it's he's best served cold. <laughs> he said, while revenge weakens society, forgiveness gives it strength. So he's obviously against Wait. revenge. Wait, sorry. Can you read it again? The Dalai Lama said that revenge weakens society and forgiveness gives society yes. strength. Yes. This is what it's all about, guys. Um, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. And this is why I always say, because people who aren't that Bible read, not that I am, I'm not trying to like be on a high horse here, but they'll say like, uh, 
oh, Old Testament, New Testament. Old Testament is, right. you know, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But, right. And then so, so the, what I'm getting at is they're saying the people will argue that it, there's contradictions in the Bible. Right. But if you really look at the overarching themes, it's the same thing spewed over and over again. Right. Which is love your neighbor right. as yourself. And back in the Old Testament, you, you get things like this. And um, I think it's important. All right, so we will start. Okay. And we walk through it. Oh, I forgot. I forgot where we were. Slow I forgot tippy- where it was. <laughs> Slow tippy toes. <laughs> it's the soup. <laughs> okay, so soup. do not seek revenge. Do not seek revenge. What's revenge? Revenge is getting back at someone or something for what happened to you. So In a bad ins- way. So it's not like you gave me flowers, I'm going to give you flowers. No, it's like if you stole my shoes i'll steal your hat i got my revenge right and sometimes because you're so mad that you stole my shoes i want to do something even worse yes so it's like not only am i going to steal your shoes i um, might kill your cat or something yeah <laughs> or like or the the numbers thing of like oh you killed one of my friends now i'll right. kill three of yours because you're just the audacity of you yeah doing anything against me yes has, i will return the revenge enraged will be tenfold. me it's enraged me yes but Leviticus nineteen eighteen is saying, "Do not seek it. Yeah, do not, do not. Um, and like seek is like so. Do not carry out revenge. Would be don't go to the house to break a window. Yeah, but seek it is like don't even, don't even try to fantasize. Yeah, about like, uh, what you could do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a big thing about it, especially because yeah, a lot of people think like, okay, I'm not going to seek revenge, but." You don't realize how much you're wishing ill on other people. Right. And even though in your own mind, you know, well, I'm not going to not going to slash their tires. But if their tires got slashed, I wouldn't I wouldn't lose any sleep over right. it. Like that in itself is one in revenge. Right. And so it's that idea of like true people talk about forgiveness and forgiveness is much harder done than said. Much harder said than done. How's it go? Easier said than done. <laughs> it's easier <laughs> said than done. Where, just like what you said with the seek word of saying, oh, um, I I forgive them. But to truly in your heart, like actual forgiveness, where right. you're not thinking if something bad happened to them, right. I'd be happy. Right. Like, that's like true not seeking revenge is I wish no ill will towards right. you. I don't want to see anything bad happen to you. No matter what you did to me. It's not easy. Right. Um, A few Thursdays ago, we did the act of contrition. And we talked about avoiding the near occasion of sin. Yes. Which is going beyond um, help me not sin. Help me not just do the act. But help me not even go near a place that would tempt me to sin. So um, to not seek revenge is if you... You haven't done it yet, but just the fantasizing about I could mm. um, do these things. I could flatten a tire and not be caught, or I could make a false claim and not be caught. Um, you are tempting yourself. Yes. So by fantasizing about ways that you can seek revenge, especially without being caught, because you don't want to just completely sink your own ship. <laughs> um, by doing that, you are tempting yourself. Because yeah. if you say, I'm not going to seek revenge, and it's just out of your mind completely, and you think, well, what would I even do? But when you're hatching a plan, even though you say, well, I'm not going to carry it out, yeah. you're setting up a scene that's going to tempt you to do yeah. it. Because if you're seeking revenge, you're hurt, you're mad, you're yeah. angry. like, And so you already have the, that situation. Mm. And then now you have this thing that you think might make you feel better. I might yeah. feel a little bit better if I let the air out of you know their tires. Yeah. So by by seeking the revenge, you are setting yourself up to have to resist, which is harder. Yeah, and um, yeah, and like I said already, there is that idea of when you're in that mindset of, and because it just goes like it, it will we'll get on. Actually, let's just move on. And okay, I'll talk about it. Um, or bear a grudge against anyone among your people. Okay, so this is where the grudge comes in, where seeking revenge is I'm gonna do something to the, right. this person. The grudge is more of what I was talking about earlier, which is you have that animosity. And so if anything happens to that person, I wouldn't, I'd be happy. That's right. And and that's, I think, the harder thing because it's easy. Seeking revenge is an action. 
you like I if you knock my coffee over, I'll take your coffee and I'll spill it out, right? Okay, right. And I can easily so you spill my coffee. It's fine. <laughs> Not gonna seek revenge. Right. Your coffee, yeah, it's it's untouched. But the grudge is a harder thing where if I'm holding a grudge against you and uh, you walk to the door and you spill your own coffee. Now there's a smile on my You're face right. because I had that grudge. I have a grudge against I, I, you. I had yeah. that. Like, I, I was waiting for something to happen because I never got over that. Right. And that is the harder thing to get over, but it's the more important thing to get over. Right. And so combined, you knock my mm. coffee over. I'm not going to seek revenge. And I have no grudge against you. I see you fall the coffee. There's no joy in my heart. You're right. I That's no- really interesting. Yeah. People have to realize that. They have to. They have to. They, they must. Or they I'll hold a to. grudge against they them. Don't have to re- they don't have to do anything. But you're right. Revenge is one thing. A grudge is another. And a grudge, you, you kind of feel even a little bit less guilty about it, yeah, right? It's like, like, it's like, I never did anything to you, but guess what? I will always hold a grudge against you. Yes. You know, and that is, and it's, it's um putting up an unnecessary wall. Yeah. And who is it really? And, you know, um, a lot of the times we talk about this is, the only person you're really hurting is yourself, right? Like, right. A lot of the times, you might have grudges against people, and they're living rent free in your head, free real estate, right on St. Yeah. Augustine Beach, right in your frontal lobe, and they're they don't think about you once. No. And so you have this grudge, and it's like, uh, you're checking you're checking up on them on the socials and being like, ah, I hope bad things happen. Right. And it's like you're spending all this mental energy. For nothing, for right. someone who's not worried about you, doesn't probably doesn't hold a grudge against you, right? And um, it's just not worth it in any sense of the word. It's um, how do you feel about anyone among your people? Is it is that um a clickish statement, or is it are 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 your people humans on Earth? Who are the people? Um, I think it's it's up for interpretation, but um. I think it, especially this is Old Testament, you know, and so it's obviously it's like talking about the tribes of Israel yeah. or whatever is happening at this moment. Yeah, and how Leviticus. terrible it would be within your community yeah. to have animosity. Yes, and so I, I think, you know, the the only thing about it is it's like, obviously, if you have true enemies, which are coming for your, your family and stuff, it's like, you can be watchful for them. Like, it, it's not like hold no grudge yourself, when, when right. someone tried to kill your your cat it's like leave your door unlocked like among your people just means on a day-to-day basis which not i'm not just saying your friends it can be some some person you work with that you hate right but that's part it's your people it's not your true enemy right or and so it's basically anyone on earth unless they're trying to kill your cat right and then it's like okay i would just maybe hold a little bit of a grudge <laughs> no i would forgive them too you know what i'm trying to say yeah i do in this context yeah. among your people is so your people can be everyone on earth all the children of god yes and then depending on the situation right um and so next is what else but but love your neighbor as yourself i am the lord that was a big jump it wasn't a walk that was a leap. That was a but long jump. But love yourself. That was a long jump in the in the, wait, in the Olympics. Okay, but love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> but love your neighbor as yourself. Now, guys, I have something important to say. Okay. <laughs> I'm pregnant. No. Um, this I find really important. Okay. Because I think one of the I think a lot of people live by this. Right? But there's an important thing you forget, and that's okay. why it doesn't work. Oh. Love your neighbor as yourself. A lot of people do that, but a lot of people don't love themselves. Oh. And when you hate yourself, it's easier to hate other people. And so a lot of, I, I feel like a lot of times we look at this, we first look outward, like, okay, love the neighbor, fine. I, I love my neighbor, yeah, oh, and, anything. But you have deep-rooted issues with yourself. Right. And then that's what turns into hatred. So you're doing this balance. Like, I don't care about myself. I don't care about other people. Like, you, like you just you see these like, cranky people that are just cranky to everybody. Right. And it's like, they're like, oh, I don't care. What? My life sucks. Why, why should I care about these people? Right. And I think the first step should never, shouldn't be, you know, like I said, it's sharpening the axe. I've talked about that before. If you're going to go cut down trees, the first thing you want to do is sharpen your axe. And it's about 
loving yourself and that goes to all of these first parts like before you can truly love people correctly like with actual genuine love you have to love yourself and someone who truly loves themselves is not the person who holds on to grudges right and and whole and seeks revenge it's these people that are completely content with themselves they're happy as themselves and then they can spread that love and positivity if there's something wrong at the source how can you truly love other people so i think it's always important because it it always adds that part as yourself not as the neighbor no yeah and not just not just love your neighbor love your neighbor as yourself love yourself and then like love your neighbor when you take care right. of yourself you want to take care of other people right yeah and it's a circle i th- i think yeah. so take care of yourself take care of yourself in all ways and then therefore take care you if you treat people the way you treat yourself yes you will treat them you you know same thing you don't want bad things to happen to you you're not going to want bad things to happen yes. to them um and when i think of who's my neighbor i think of the good samaritan um question that the apostles asked jesus when he said um i think he said <laughs> love your neighbor yeah. and they were like well who who's my neighbor and and he said everybody well he said the good samaritan story to be like you tell me who the neighbor is yes we're all his neighbor so we're all the neighbor love your neighbor as yourself good point you bring up bring up a lot of people say that well i don't love myself so how so how can i love you but i feel when when you get people like that and you say you don't love yourself okay can you love me and they say yeah i can love you and, ah so you said reverse it so yeah. love yourself the way you love other people right if you can love me then you are love so you're mm. lovable you know just two sides of the same coin right so just try to take it away from people who don't love themselves are judging themselves as unlovable yeah or you know not worth something in some way but the fact that you just love which is god's command his only command Mm -hmm. means you are already doing god's work so you can love me therefore you can love you i'm a mirror and your glue bounces off me sticks to you a mirror I don't know. I'm rubber. You're rubber. Glue. I'm rubber. <laughs> you're like, glue. It sounds familiar, but okay. It bounces off me, sticks to you. So th- these words are said, and then the the one, two, three, four, last four words of verse eighteen is. I am the Lord. I am the Lord, and th- I think that's kind of like we always talk about God is the parent, and we're the children, uh, and it's sort of like because I said so, you know, the last word, yeah. parent, but why? But why? I don't know. That's how just, that's yeah. how I read it. Like, there's no debating what I'm saying here. Yes. Yeah. It's like, but what if? But what if? Yeah. Like, because like, especially with revenge and grudge, right? Right. Or, like, it's like, oh, but like, what if they, they did this? What if they did kill my cat? What if? And, and it's like, never. Do not. Do not seek revenge. Right. Do not hold a grudge. Love. Love each other. Right. I am the Lord. And it's like, that's the yeah. It really is. Dro- drop the mic, like you said. I'll go love. We start it with um, the Dalai Lama, and we'll we, end with the Dalai Lama. We'll end with the Pope. Oh, hey, Pope Francis. Did he do anything controversial in the past week? I don't know. I feel like <laughs> people are friendly. Yeah. I know. What are you doing? So, the Pope says Jesus replaced the law of revenge with the law of love. Revenge is never just. We are permitted to ask for justice. It is our duty to exercise justice. But we're not permitted to avenge ourselves. Mm. I know I said a lot of words, but he's he's just agreeing with the gospel that yeah. says um, you can't do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can't, it, it, I think what he was focusing on was in the name of justice. You know. Yes, you are not. You are. Not, I have to make things even. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that is not up to you. No. Um, you can only yeah you can only ask you know people try to help god yes <laughs> yes by you um did something terrible to a child so now i have the right to kill you yeah because we all agree that was terrible so i'm going to kill you but god is the judge god is the judge and obviously you know we live in a society justice that with a judicial system and yes. stuff that there is it's not like we live in an anarchy anarchy society where it's like well if i don't do it nobody will it's like right we live luckily you know in america we live in a society where laws are upheld that 
all come from a moral standing. Right. So as a singular person, there's no reason to right. get in between that to be like, no, it's not good enough. I want to right. I want to do it. I want to uh, avenge right. this person. I, I want the revenge. I, like Because that's, you're letting hatred in your heart. And no right. matter how much hatred the person has that you're trying to avenge them, you're allowing that to enter your heart. Right. Which you never want. Like, no. You like you never want to get fueled by that because it's fueled by hatred, and that's that's not happy. No, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I don't know if that's a Bible verse or what, but it just is one of these things people repeat over and over and over again. I don't know either. What I do know is that has been walk, walk through, through Thursday. Thursday. Yahoo! <laughs> All right, guys, we'll be back tomorrow for the last podcast in Florida. Florida man, oh Friday. Man. Time flies. Florida Florida flies. Florida flies. That sounds like bugs. Yeah, they bite. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll be back. Um, don't go seeking revenge. Don't hold in grudge. But love your neighbors as yourself. That means both love yourself and love your neighbors. Peace.